Hello, YouTube. Let me just get this started. Looking glamorous today. Okay. Mm -mm. All right, off we go. Try this again. Okay. All right. So today's topic is going to be part one of two, which I did not have the intention of doing. But as I was writing my notes on how to handle the holidays, I was like five pages deep alone on mindset. So today's podcast is going to be edition one, handling the holidays mindset style. No eating tips or tricks can work if the space between your ears is not ready and primed first. So today we are solely going to focus on your brain, your mindset, and then in about two weeks, we will get into the tips and tricks of actually eating and handling the dinner itself or the party itself. So obviously the holidays, right, are people's favorite time of the year. Um, I know it's my husband's favorite time of the year. I enjoy them a lot, but I do not enjoy the cold. So it's give or take for me. But unfortunately, it's also people's like most worrisome or scared time of the year, which when you think about Christmas and Thanksgiving and Hanukkah and the new year, you don't want to have worries attached to those. So that's something that we're going to talk about a little bit today. The one thing that I really want to focus on too is that the holidays happen every single year since 1776, right? When this country first came about. And yes, Christmas has been happening way before this country came about. And so was New Year's. And I guess Thanksgiving was just the original, but they come every year. But for some reason, we are surprised and worried and panicking every year. Like for some reason, 2023 was the first time we've ever had a Thanksgiving, Christmas, and a New Year's before. All right. Most of us listening to this are over 20 years old. So this is our 20th time experiencing this. It is no surprise. It is no shock. And guess what? It's going to happen for the rest of time. So there shouldn't be fear attached to it, right? We want to really focus on getting off this new year, new me hamster wheel that we are constantly on that starts every January 1st, fades around mid-February. We kind of get nervous again around May for the summer. And then we get into fall and we put the weight back on and we just say, screw it. It's the holidays. I'm going to add weight. And then new year, new me once again, right? It's that cycle over and over and over again, right? If the holidays you gain weight. If the summer you party and gain weight, that's five months out of the year that you are quote unquote off track. So even if you are super adherent for the other seven, right, that's only like 58% adherent or 58% consistency. Someone might want to double check my math there, but I know it's not phenomenal consistency. So we can't lump the holidays into a three month span of crap. It's just too much time every year over and over again. So the goal after this podcast and for hopefully people to reach out is to end this cycle of gain weight, okay, be motivated, new year, new me, kind of fall off track, gain weight, come back, new year, new me, right? We want to get off of that, right? There is an opportunity for you to walk away on December 31st, exactly where you kind of started in October. Just because it's the holidays does not mean you have to dig yourself into a five or 10 pound hole. It's not forced on you. It's not inevitable. Plenty of people get through the holidays enjoying them and also not putting on weight, right? It's all about the choices you make and the mindset that is attached to that. Okay. So let's look at what the holidays actually are, right? You have, I guess you could really count Halloween 
I know that's kind of starting early, but Halloween is a hard time for some people. I know that I have a sweet tooth with candy. I'm still at 34 years old, a gummy bear lover. And for me, once I have one piece, it's like Niagara Falls. I just can't stop. This is actually an embarrassing story, but I'll tell it anyway, because again, nothing is more embarrassing than what I produced on episode two. But I'll never forget one year with teaching, we were collecting extra Halloween candy for kids in like homeless shelters or foster care. And we were going to put together baskets for them. So all these baskets filled with all this delicious candy were in our faculty room. And every once in a while, I would sneak in there and grab a piece. And then I would walk out and be like, are you kidding me? Like you just took candy from kids who are in homeless shelters. Like what is wrong with you? But then my logical brain was like, oh, well, I'm just doing them a favor. Like candy is obviously not a nutritious food and we want them to be as healthy as possible. So I'm actually just taking one for the team here and sacrificing my own health for them. Yeah, I know that was totally a way to just make myself feel better, but I do love it. So I'm right there with you. So we can include Halloween because we all know that candy can last for months and months and months. And then we have Thanksgiving, right? And if you're younger than 30 with no kids, you have Thanksgiving Eve, which is the wildest day of the year, supposedly. And then you have Christmas Eve, and then you have Christmas, and then you have New Year's Eve, and then you have New Year's Day, right? So four and a half to five and a half days are actual holidays. And if you celebrate Hanukkah, you add six extra in. I know it's eight days, but if you take away Christmas, Christmas Eve, it's a little six extra. But I don't believe that there are feasts every day on Hanukkah. So we'll count it, but it's definitely not an eating holiday compared to other Jewish holidays. So average, we'll say six days out of 61 days. So if we're just looking at November and December, that's 61 days. And only six of them are true holidays. So in reality, you can be 90% adherent through the holidays, even if you let yourself go wild on those six days, right? You have an amazing opportunity to adhere. It's not like there's 45 holidays in that two month span. Now the issue lies with turning these six days into 61 days of the fuck it's because it's the holidays. And yes, of course, no one just celebrates those six days, right? You have in-laws that you're going to see. You have extended family that you're going to have Thanksgiving there also. You have Friendsgiving, if you have friends. I think I've only had that once. You have holiday office parties. You have you know, your significant other's parties. I get that there are more than just those six celebrations, but there needs to be sacrifice somewhere too, right? Like you don't have to say yes to all those. Obviously you're a close family, I get it, but you don't have to go to every single office or spouse's party. You may want to, but that's different than needing to, right? The party is still going to be fun for everybody if you are not there. And I know that might be a hard pill to swallow, but they're still going to have a good time. So don't think you're doing someone a favor by going, right? You're doing yourself a favor because you want to go. The party will still be fun if you stay home. So we obviously have more than just six, right? But in order to get off that new year, new me hamster wheel, and actually learn how to navigate the holiday season for the next 40 times it comes around in your life, and probably more, there needs to be some plan. There needs to be some sacrifice. There needs to be some intention going into this. And before we get into you and your intentions and your choices, I want to focus a little bit more on how to deal with family and loved ones. And again, if you've been listening to my show, you know I didn't grow up in the most traditional household and the most people we've ever had at a holiday event was like six. So yes, it's a little different, but I married into a family that is massive. 
and so massive that they had to have Thanksgiving dinner outside under a tent because a large home could not even fit everybody, right? So I see both sides. And unfortunately, a lot of the times with holidays, it's the family that brings on all that fear and anxiety, right? It's so often I hear from clients like, oh, I'm so nervous to like go see my family or have a family party or, you know, they're just, they're going to judge me or they're going to make comments. And it's really a lot of family pressure and even, you know, office pressure and whatnot. So if the holidays is a time of fear and anxiety for you because of family judgments and friend events, we need to definitely take a look and listen to what I'm about to kind of say and think a little bit more about your situation, right? So there are, there are two scenarios that can play out when you are making decisions and habits to better yourself, right? One, the people around you can support you. They can cheer you on and they can even join you, right? That is ideal, if, right? If we could pick one or the other, this is the one we would pick where people support you, they help you, they cheer you on, and they even get in on some of the habits you're doing so it makes it easier for you. Or they don't do that. Instead, your choices, your new habits worry them or show them something in themselves that they don't like, right? They start to question why they aren't making those choices themselves and why they're not making it a priority, right? They can start to feel bad that they are not making those choices. They can start to look at themselves and judge themselves. And the only way they can make themselves feel better is by making you stop, right? If you stop making these healthier choices and healthier decisions, they won't feel as bad about themselves, right? So if you guys go out to eat, you order a club soda with grilled chicken, they order big ziti, they have some thoughts in their head on why they couldn't make the choice you did. So instead, they're going to pressure you to maybe get dessert or get a drink. So they feel more even or more accepted, right? So they're going to get you to try and stop so they don't feel bad about themselves. This is where the judgment, the snarky comments, the making you defend your choices, that's where this comes from, right? They're all of a sudden, they're a brainiac on the topic, right? Don't you always find that hysterical that the person that's pushing like 300 pounds, pre-diabetic, who has trouble walking up the stairs, all of a sudden like knows things about health and fitness? Like, oh, really? When did you become like the expert on this, right? So it's all internal on them. It's all their insecurities, right? None of this is because they actually know anything about the topic or none of this should make you doubt yourself and your choices. It is 1000% their insecurity and them not liking their own choices that's manifesting in them commenting on you so you can stop and they can feel better, right? So let's chat a little bit about how we can make you feel more solid on the choices you make so these comments don't bother you because as much as I want to say they'll stop, they probably won't, all right? I'm almost a decade into this and my family doesn't really make comments, but people I'm around make comments all the time, right? And they see that I'm successful, they see that I'm healthy, and they still come, right? So I don't think the comments will ever stop. So we're going to have to look internally and kind of figure out how to not care as much, right? Let them roll off our backs. So the first thing with mindset, right, is no matter how good your plan is going into something, like you have the macros written down, you have this amazing elaborate plan on how to handle this event. If your actual belief and self-conscience uh, and, you know, your inner thoughts aren't matching that plan, it's not going to happen. Right. One of my favorite analogies for that is you can create this most amazing, intricate home, you know, on blueprint with the most beautiful moldings and finishings. It's astounding. But if you go to build that beautiful home on sand, it's going to crumble. All right. And think about the sand as your mindset. Your mindset has to be strong. Your mindset 
has to be concrete for that beautiful house to stand any kind of chance. Right. So the first step I always try and tell my clients is, and this sounds corny, and I definitely roll my eyes at it at first too, is to envision what a successful holiday season would be. Right. First, paint that picture in your head. What would I label a success on January 5th? Right. When I'm looking back from Halloween to New Year's, what would I have to do? What would I would ha- what would I have done? to label this a successful holiday season, right? Because we can't be successful if we don't even know what that means yet. So don't smack a label of not gaining weight, right? Because that's, ugh, there, there's, there's, no, there's no plan there. There's no measurable system in place to get that. That's just a goal, an end goal. We need to create a system. We need to create a step-by-step goal of how to get that not gaining weight goal to happen, right? We want to do things that we can measure daily. So yeah, of course, like not gaining weight might be a good end goal, but if that's all we're envisioning, it's going to crumble, right? We need to set actionable steps to get there, right? So some of those actionable steps can kind of be hitting my macros six out of seven days a week, hitting my protein all 61 days of November and December. So no matter what happens, I'm going to hit my protein that day. Getting 10,000 steps, six out of seven days a week, and keeping my gym routine the same, right? If you do all those things, it's going to be very hard to gain weight over the holiday season. But all those are measurable. All those I can track, right? All those are things that I can absolutely measure day to day. Right. And I would actually call those your like holiday non negotiables. So I talk about this a lot non negotiables, right? Things that no matter what happens in your day, they have to get done. And yes, obviously, if like a meteor strikes, whatever, we can throw our non negotiables out the window. But for the most part, no matter how busy the schedule, no matter if I'm sick, no matter if the kids are sick, you know, normal obstacles that come up in your life, these things have to get done. My four are always 10,000 steps, hit my protein, drink my water, and this is a weekly one, but go to the gym four times a week or work out four times a week. It doesn't always have to be at the gym. So I will make those happen. And yes, once in a blue moon, I'll fall short a little bit on protein. Maybe I'll get 9,600 steps, but for the most part, they happen 365 days a year. You can change those for the holidays, right? You can be a little bit more lenient on yourself. You can make them a little bit more specific, okay, where you're only going to say yes to one holiday party a week, right? That's a great one. Um, But you need to make things that you're going to stick to, that you're going to make sure get done no matter what. We also want to create some internal questions that you can ask yourself when you're faced with these hard situations, right? It's like (laughs) so often that we'll be like, I blacked out and ended up like 3,000 calories in. We need to be a little bit more present when situations get tough. We can't just like shut off our mind. Our mind has to be even more present in the situation, right? Ask yourself, are you hungry, angry, tired, or lonely, right? That's the halt method. And I don't love that method always, but maybe in the moment in a holiday party, ask it, are you actually hungry? I hope you're not angry, but I guess family can piss you off, right? And you can eat to get your anger out. Are you tired? Okay. Or are you lonely? Are you standing in the corner, not really with anyone? So you're going to make your hands busy and your face busy by eating. Okay. These are things you can kind of do to assess yourself. And I even told a client today, like, get out your phone, open up your notes category, your notes in your phone and write. Before you do what you're about to do, or before you're about to do something you regret, open up your phone, open up notes and say how you're feeling right now. Even if that doesn't stop you necessarily from making choices you're not going to be proud of, we can look back and assess those feelings and then we can really make some changes, right? You can also ask yourself, is this just to fit in with the people around me, right? Like are Susie and Karen and Emily all, you know, double fisting cocktail hour and having drinks? Do I feel weird? Do I not want them to judge me? Like, so I'm just going to do it right? Is, are you doing this just because you're the only person not, right? And if that's the case, 
stand a little stronger, pull your shoulders back, like have confidence in yourself. If it's you want to fit in and you want to not get questions asked, go get a quote unquote drink from the bar. Make it a lime with seltzer. It looks like a vodka soda. No one's going to taste test it and call you out. Okay. Um, another question, right, is this instant gratification of slamming this pigs in a blanket going to last or am I going to regret this within a minute and even more so tomorrow? Right. So a lot of the times people eating and drinking in the moment is because of the instant gratification. We are the instant gratification generation. And okay? we love to feel good in the moment. We love skipping commercials. We love swiping on Instagram and social media, getting exactly what we want as fast as we want. Amazon Prime, prime example. But we have to think a little bit into the future. All right. As good as a pigs in a blanket tastes in that 30 seconds it takes you to eat it is going into my fitness pal, logging it, kind of seeing what it did on top of other things you eat. Is that worth it? Try and weigh out the will this make me stronger or will this make me weaker? Okay, take a second and pause before you throw it down your throat. Next can be, right, can I remove myself from this situation? Are you standing over cocktail hour, right? Are you standing at the bar? Are you leaning up against, you know, the doorway that the servers come out, right? Put yourself in a situation that's not as tempting. And this one kind of goes into the tips and tricks that I'm going to do in two weeks, but get barriers in the way of you and whatever is tempting you. And then another one can be, can I reach out to someone that will help me in this moment? And this is like a little bit Alcoholics Anonymous, right? Your sponsor. And I laughed at first when I wrote this, but I was like, this makes sense. And this is why it works for them. Right. And I know food can be an addiction. So if there is a friend, if there is a coach, if there is someone that is going, understands what you're going through, instead of putting your phone necessarily away and eating or drinking whenever you want, reach out to them in that moment. Hey, Susie, having a hard time at this holiday party. Like, talk to me about something or, you know, remind me what my goals are. And sometimes hearing it from someone else can really help. So reach out to someone. I mean, for all my clients, I am here and you know that like, as long as it's not midnight, I'm pretty much going to respond to you. I'm here to access. So when you're having a hard time out and about, don't shy away from communication, right? Reach out to your coach, reach out to your friends that understand, lean into them. Do not pull away. And then the last question kind of is like, what am I really missing out on if I don't eat A, B, or C, or if I don't drink A, B, or C? Am I going to wake up tomorrow and regret not having that pigs in a blanket? <laughs> I won't answer that, honestly. Just kidding. Probably not, right? Am I going to wake up tomorrow and regret not slamming that third tequila soda? Definitely not, right? There, there's nothing you're really missing out on in that time. And you know what? If you wake up that next morning and you're like, God, all I want is that pigs in a blanket, go fucking make some, right? If you're still thinking about it 12 hours later and you regret your choice for not having it at that party, go fucking make some and have them and move on, right? If you wake up at 7 a.m. and all you can think about is a tequila soda, we got other issues, right? And hey, I'll stick to the same thing. If you wake up and all you regret and all you can think about is that third tequila soda, it's five o'clock somewhere, go ahead and have one with breakfast. But I can guarantee 99.9% .9 of people are not going to feel that way. They're going to wake up and be like, hell yeah, I feel good. I slept good. I don't feel like shit today. And look at my macros. They're pretty damn good. All right. I've never had any client in all the time I've done this tell me that they woke up the next morning and regretted making the better choice the night before. No one. I don't think they've lied to me either. All right, so also realize that you are also allowed to do whatever you want. You can take a break from these new habits and this new lifestyle, and you can eat the pigs in a blanket. You can slam the tequila sodas. You can do what you want during this holiday season, right? But if you do that, you have to have to manage your expectations of the scale of your progress pictures and your overall like vibe of how you're feeling energy-wise, bloat-wise, 
All right. There, it's just, it can't be both ways. You can't do whatever you want and then expect to see the scale and pictures be better. All right. So if you're going to take a break and just enjoy holiday season and not track and go to every party and enjoy it, then just realize the scale in your pictures and your measurements are going to reflect that. And as long as those two are okay in your brain, then that's fine. You're managing your expectations. But if you're going to do A and go to all the parties, enjoy all the food, and then step on the scale the next day and be freaking pissed that the scale went up and like start questioning your coach or questioning this quote unquote program, that's a problem because the disconnect is between you and your actions, no one else, right? And I had just heard someone kind of talk about the voices in your head and how, you know, you got that angel devil and it made so much sense to me. And I know <laughs> I am very in tune with these two voices in my head because I can literally play out the conversation sometimes. So you have this voice, right, that we'll call it the angel on your shoulder. That is like, we are going to be 100% adherent to our goals. You're strong. You can do this. We're not having any Christmas cookies. We're not having any candy. You have goals. You have macros. You're sticking to it. And then you have the realist. I don't want to call it the devil. I want to call it just, you know, you're, you're, you're Jane Doe, just the normal person, the realist, right, who... 1000% is like, well, you can eat that. Like you have an arm, you have a mouth. So you can reach out your arm, you can pick it up, you can nibble on it. And guess what? You're going to be fine after you're going to wake up tomorrow. Everything's going to be okay. Right? So you have this crazy adherent person. I like to think of like the um, extreme loser coaches like them, like insane yelling all the time has to be this way enough. Right? So what was Jillian Michaels, right? We'll call the adherent voice, like Jillian Michaels on crack. And then we'll call the realist voice, you know, just your Jane Doe. And they're going to go back and forth, right? You're going to, they're going to see a Christmas cookie and Jillian Michaels is going to scream about how weak you would be if you ate it. This is not on your goals. Don't touch it. And then your Jane Doe voice is going to be like, you can pick that up and eat it. You're a grown ass woman. It's a cookie. It can go in your mouth and guess what? Tomorrow you're going to wake up and everything's going to be the same, right? And these two voices are going to battle. And the more power you give this cookie and the stronger your Jillian Michaels voice is, well, the stronger your Jane Doe voice is going to get. And most of the time your Jane Doe voice will win to show that you absolutely can just pick up the cookie and not drop dead, right? So I've done this before. I can like remember standing over like candy or a cake and being like, what is wrong with you? Like, stop eating this. Like, this is bad for you. This is bad choice. And then like two seconds later, I'll be like, it's fucking cake. I love it. I'm an adult. I'm going to freaking eat it. And guess what? I ate it. 99% of the time, Jane Doe voice wins just to prove that it's really not the end of the world. So the more power we give these foods and the more taboo they are, usually bites us in the ass and we usually eat more than them, All right? Instead of that, where you're like putting this big X mark on certain foods where they're just off limits and you're not going to do it, just look at foods as a nutritional value. Some offer more nutrition than others, right? And some are better for your energy than others. Right. But if you eat pretty much anything in moderation, you're going to be fine that next day. Right. And yes, a Christmas cookie doesn't suit your goals right now. So you might make a choice not to have it. But you acknowledge that you're a grown adult and you could have one and you would be fine. But you're going to choose not to because you have certain goals you're going for. Right. You just kind of want to talk to yourself in a more realistic, kind way honest manner instead of making these holiday foods on this crazy pedestal, right? Okay. Jillian Michaels and Jane Doe. I did not have that written in my notes. That was just on the fly. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to take a break for our sponsors. <laughs> just kidding. We clearly don't have any sponsors, but I thought I wanted to do that earlier today because I thought it was so funny. Okay. So now back to it. So some hacks, mindset hacks that I wanted to chat about. First one, Try and focus on the people and the memories rather than the food, okay? In reality, if we were to look 
at holiday parties and dinners, right? You can eat turkey. You can eat mashed potatoes, ham, cookies, whenever you want. Right? It's not like these foods are only available November 1st through December 31st. You can buy a damn turkey whenever you want. You can make mashed potatoes whenever the fuck you want. You can make Christmas cookies whenever you want. Right? They're not these untouchable, only can have them for these 60 days kind of foods. And that's another thing about giving them power, right? We are like, well, we can only have this certain Christmas cookie that grandma makes you know, for these couple of days. So I'm going to have 30 of them because I love them so much. I'm sure if you ask grandma to make them in March, she'll make them in March and you can have a couple, right? So they're not these untouchable foods. We need to stop putting them up on this pedestal, right? In reality, you could have Thanksgiving dinner every Thursday if you wanted. In reality, you could have Christmas dinner every first of the month if you wanted, Right. I have a friend at work whose husband's favorite meal is like Thanksgiving dinner. She makes it for him all the time. Obviously not in like the masses or every single side, but she makes it. And you know what? It probably keeps her a lot more in check on Thanksgiving because it's no big deal. So maybe the secret to this is having Thanksgiving and Christmas dinner once a month. Um, Right. But get this food off this crazy pedestal that you have it on. You can eat it whenever you want, but you know, you can't do whatever you want. See your family all the time right? You can't have all your extended family in one room all the time, which some of you might be like, thank the Lord we can. (laughs) But hopefully for the most part, we love seeing our families, right? Or at least most of them. You don't get to be around them as much. And as life gets busier and as you get older, people are split in so many different directions. So let's focus on the people we're around on the holidays and the memories and the laughs we can make during the holidays, not this food that is accessible to us whenever we want. Right. So that's my first little trick. Right. Realize that this food is nothing special. You can make it whenever you please. Right. And if you don't make it and it's like grandma's mac and cheese that you love, again, just ask grandma to make it in March. She probably will. Next one is it is okay if you want to indulge from time to time. Right. We can't live in fear of a chance of overeating. Right. I can't be petrified to go over 2,300 calories. It's not that scary. In reality, everything's going to be fine. I could go and slam 5,000 calories today and I'd figure a way to like, you know, have it come down or cut it out in other areas. It will be fine. We will wake up in the morning just fine. Yes, maybe two to three pounds heavier on the scale because of water, 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 sodium, extra food in your belly, but that's it right? It's not this all or nothing mentality. It shouldn't be something that you restrict the things you love, right? If you have one appetizer at Thanksgiving and then you just throw in the fucking towel because you didn't plan on having an appetizer, then you're probably going to make very poor decisions, right? If your plan is, I'm going to have a little bit here, a little bit there. And if I have a little bit more than I planned, it's okay. I'm just going to get back on track for dinner. That's a lot more realistic. It's also a lot more giving and flexible. If you go into Thanksgiving dinner and you're like, I will absolutely not touch an appetizer. I, my plate will be 90% lean Turkey and I will have one dinner roll. Like those are some serious boundaries. And most likely if you, you know, you nibble on one little appetizer, you're going to consider yourself a failure and just throw it all out the window, right? Not the mindset we want to go in with that. And if you are on the macro train and in coaching or you're not, if you spend 85% of the year being adherent, a couple of holiday parties are not going to do anything to that consistency, right? This is a little bit of another topic because some of us will be like, yeah, I'm 85% adherent throughout the year and you're not even close. But for the people that have honest assessments of themselves and for the most part of the year, they hit their macros, they go to the gym, they drink their water. Holiday season, a couple holiday parties is not going to ruin that consistency. I just had a client who is, she's super adherent most of the time. She was going to Greece and she was asking me what proteins to pack and what to pack. And I told her, don't fucking waste an ounce in your luggage for a protein bar. You're going to Greece in a once in a lifetime trip. Go. Enjoy. Don't think about macros. Don't think about what protein snacks I can have on the side. Go and enjoy it, right? You are, you are adherent 
most of the time, 90% of the time, 85% of the time, these seven days in Greece are not going to erase a year of consistency. Just enjoy it, right? And she came back and not one pound different. So if you are solid throughout the rest of the year, holiday parties are not going to throw you back. Um, I touched on this next piece a little bit earlier, but it's about how to not turn a meal into a day or a day into a week. And I even guess we could say for the holidays, a week into two months, right? If you have one pigs in a blanket that you didn't plan on, don't turn that into 30 pigs in a blanket, a plate full of mac and cheese, and then a whole pumpkin pie, right? One meal shouldn't ruin the whole day. All right, if you go for Christmas egg sandwiches or you have a big Christmas breakfast with your family and you go hard, that doesn't mean lunch has to be wild and so does dinner, All right? You can rein it back in. One meal does not have to mean the whole day goes out the window. On the other hand too, one full day, right? Let's say Thanksgiving is mimosas in the morning, yummy eggs, you know, an early dinner that is full full, and then some serious dessert. You do all three, right? You do the mimosas, you do the dinner, you do the dessert. Tomorrow can be right back on schedule with your meal planning, right? You don't have to wake up and be like, oh, I'm such a shit bag. Like I was so gross yesterday. Let's just keep going, whatever. I'm a lost cause, right? I'm going to be fat forever, right? And, the, and start the pity party. Just get back on your shit. Okay. And then obviously the next one is you have a holiday party, let's say Thursday and Friday and Saturday. You, you just do it. You blow it out, right? Back to back to back. You're blowing it out. That also doesn't mean you have to go, eh, screw it. I'm just going to keep blowing it out till New Year's. Whatever. That's it. Doesn't matter. I wasted it. Right. So I did an example and I actually looked up all these numbers. Three slices of pizza is about 850 calories, right? So if you are having a day and then you decide to have pizza, you have one slice, shit, now you have three. You're 850 calories in the hole. But then you stop, right? You cut it off, get back on track, go back to your water. And for dinner, you have your, you know, your ground chicken, vegetables, side of potatoes. That's 850 calories that you're probably only over your daily allotment by a couple hundred. Or you can do option two. You take down those three slices of pizza, 850 calories. You get so mad at yourself. You call yourself a failure. You start the pity party and you just say, fuck it. You have a beer. You have three cannolis and five garlic knots. All right. I know that sounds like a lot of food, but all of us could probably do that. Well, that's another extra 2,600 calories. So instead of giving yourself this pity party after 850 calories of pizza and throwing in the towel, move on, get yourself together. Don't eat an extra 1,800 calories just because, right? And keep going. It's the choice that we make after the original quote unquote bad choice that sends us over, right? The three slices of pizza didn't do anything to us. The beer, the three cannolis and the knots did, right? So try and catch yourself in that moment, especially with the holidays, right? If you go a little too hard on appetizers, just rein it back in. Get back on it. Every single one of us can continue on the plan. No one's forcing you then to like go wild through dinner and dessert. And same thing goes for a day. Just because you ate yourself into a painful food coma on Thanksgiving doesn't mean that the next day you also have to bury yourself in leftovers until your jean buttons pop off. All right. No rule there. You don't need to be on the floor moaning and groaning of stomach pains. We've all been there, but it doesn't need to happen. All right. Let the one day happen wake up the next and get back on routine. Remember the holidays are truly only like six days total in a 60 day window. That's it. It's actually a small chunk. Okay. Fourth one, don't restrict yourself all day. So by like eight o'clock when dessert comes out, you just black out and wake up in a bowl of like leftover mashed potatoes, right? You want to enjoy the holiday. You want to have some bites and licks and tastes of things that you like. Saying no, 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 no will usually result in your pot of emotion overflowing, you wanting to enjoy, you wanting to be part of it, and then you binge worse than you ever would have with just some bites and licks as the day goes on. 
right? If you have one pigs in a blanket and another appetizer and you fill your plate with protein first at dinner, but you also enjoy the sides, you have a slice of the pumpkin pie and even a scoop of ice cream, you did a great job. But if you say absolutely no appetizers, only protein at dinner, I'm not touching the pie, you, you just ruin that day. And most likely you're going to be so angry and over like flowing with emotion that you said no, no, no to all these things that you're going to end up making some sort of late night leftover or dessert binge that is going to be thousands of calories over what a couple of pigs in a blanket and a slice of pumpkin pie would have been, right? And then at the end of the day, you just have to own your choices. No one, no one, let's say it one more time, right? No one tied you down and waterboarded you mac and cheese. As amazing as that might be, it didn't happen. No one forced you to do anything. They may make comments and they may waft food in front of your nose, but at the end of the day, they didn't tie you down. No one made you eat yourself out of a tank of mashed potatoes to survive. No one told you that if you didn't drink three glasses of wine, that they're going to kidnap your kids, right? We, we pretend like we kind of lose our choice at these parties and we don't. I know our choices are harder to make, but there's still choices we're making. So no matter what happens, you, you did it. And yes, obviously those examples I just did are extreme, but we have to take responsibility for the choices and the actions. They are ours. We made the choice of going to the party. We made the choice of eating what we did. We made the choice of drinking what we did. Nobody else did it to us. There can be outside, you know, pressure, but once again, you need to have your boundaries and your non-negotiables and you need to be strong on those, right? We talk about peer pressure in elementary school. Learn to say no. What's, what's dare? I think dare has something with that in it. With drugs, right? Same thing. We have to be able to stand up to the bullies and the peer pressure because at the end of the day, we did it to ourselves. So there is no one to point the finger at besides ourselves. So I know I do this like with my clients that they're like, well, my cousin, I'm like, eh, stop there. Your cousin maybe put pressure on you. Your cousin maybe invited you to this certain scenario, but you went and you put the food in your mouth. You put the booze in your mouth, right? No one else did it to you. And again, that's fine. We just have to make sure we line up our actions with what we're expecting, okay? It's the post I just did the other day on Instagram about people blaming the program. It's not the freaking program, right? It's the fact that you go out every weekend. You have 35 days of holiday parties and you enjoy every single one of them, right? It's you. Point the finger internal. Whatever you decide to do, whatever choices you decide to make, make sure you own them. We need to manage our expectations of the scale, the mirror, your energy, and your measurements to come after that. The scale is not going to be down. It's just not. No matter how well you handle a holiday party or dinner, 99% of the time, the scale is not going to be lower or probably even the same. Just because you didn't cook all the food, most of holiday food is filled with more fat, oil, and sodium that you normally cook with, and you're never going to know the exact macros. So even if you think you under ate by 500 calories for the day, you probably didn't. And even if you did, it's still more sodium. It's still more fat. So you're going to hold on to water. Okay. The only way the scale might be down is if you really indulge in booze and you are super dehydrated, right? We call them the vodka abs or the Tito's abs, right? You ever wake up one day after going out hard and you're like, holy moly, I am shredded. Well, it's because you're dehydrated. And then the next day is when the scale shoots up, right? So that's the only way the scale will be down. And I promise you it will be up the next day. Weight just doesn't appear overnight, right? You don't go to bed at 150 and all of a sudden wake up at 153. It's the choices you made that made that happen, okay? So when people are like, I don't know how I put on all this weight, I can tell you. You stopped moving as much and you started eating more. That's how that weight came on, right? You can't not know. It's the choices you made. We also don't need to sit and like wallow or regret the choices we made regret, being angry, that does nothing for us moving forward, right? So you can be pissed for like 30 seconds and be like, what the fuck, again? Like, again, I did this. But 
harping on that and pitying yourself and self-hate and self-nasty talk is doing nothing for you besides hurting your own feelings worse. So give yourself like 60 seconds to bitch and then figure out where the problem was. Assess the situation, figure out the weak spot, figure out what you need to do better and what you need to change next time. Because again, the quote, right? Um, Doing the same thing over and over again is, damn, not insane. It is insane. But now I'm blanking on the word. And because I don't edit this, I cannot pause. But it's when everyone knows this quote, right? Doing the same thing over and over again while expecting different results is insanity. That's not the right word, but you know what I'm thinking of. And that's what this is. People go into social events and holiday parties in the holidays doing the same thing they did for the past five years, setting these crazy rules that they're not going to do. They collapse. They put on weight. They get the fuckets and they happen again. And then it happens in 2022. And then it happens in 2023. Right. And they're doing the same exact thing over and over again, thinking that this year it might be different. Stop with that. Something needs to change. Right. It's like people that kind of want to work with me, but don't. They just, they want it, they want to do it their way. But the problem is their way hasn't been working for like 10 years. They've been yo-yoing back and forth. They haven't gotten as strong as they want. They're not as lean as they want. But for some reason, they are just stuck in their way. Well, then guess what? In three more years, it's still not going to work. Something needs to actually change, right? And it needs to be more than just, I'm planning to. All right, oh, next Christmas, I'm going to plan differently. That we need to address what actually broke down and what we actually need to change, right? So instead of feeling bad for yourself, look back and reflect. Where did your plan fall off course? What obstacles came up that you didn't navigate well? And let's learn and grow from this because guess what? The holidays are going to be back in 364 days and we all know how fast life goes. Also, Memorial Day is coming up. July 4th is coming up. Labor Day is coming up. There are so many holidays. There are so many barbecues. There are so many weddings, right? So just because it's labeled Christmas or labeled Thanksgiving, they really are just another like social event. And we have hundreds of those throughout our lifetime. So we need to learn how to navigate them as a whole. So that's really it for the mindset portion. Um, I couldn't imagine if I did the tips and tricks also. This would be like the longest podcast of my life. So I hope that helped a little bit. I hope you can re-listen to this before a Christmas dinner or a Thanksgiving party or an office party and kind of get your mind right. I also want to offer my help, right? I'm no mindset guru, but I've worked on my mental toughness or my plan for these things for a long time now, and I'm not perfect. I will probably have the pigs in a blanket, but it's the after choices or the after effect that makes the biggest deal. If you want any kind of help as the holidays approach, with mindset, with a plan, with non-negotiables you can set up, please reach out. That's why I am here. That's why, again, my true passion is the one-on-one coaching. I am guidance for you. Yes, I'm a nutritionist. Yes, I'm a personal trainer. But really, what makes my company, me, Coach Steph, and my husband different is that we are we are your sponsor, right? We are here for you with our direct cell phone numbers Whenever you need us, whenever you need that shoulder to lean on, whenever you need that help, we're here. Um, It's not a computer answering you. It's not a stranger who doesn't know you. It's not a PDF saying, read these tips. It's literally us with voice memos, FaceTimes, whatever you need. And if that's what you need this year to get you through the holidays before you can really establish maybe some better plans, then sign up. I know it's a scary time to sign up for nutrition because there's all these dinners and whatnot, but it's actually the best time to sign up, right? It's easy to be health conscious in September when the biggest holiday is Labor Day. It's not as easy to be as health conscious in November and December. So that's when you need the help. That's not when you should avoid it. That's when you should lean in on it. So we are here for you. Um, In two weeks, I will be doing part B, which is how to conquer the holiday tips and tricks while actually being in the moment. Um, And again, like always, thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, I hope this helped. Please leave a review, follow the show, send it to all your family and friends, 
maybe this one especially. So they leave the fuck, they leave you alone at Christmas dinner. Kidding. Um, you know, send them a text, but like, Hey, just heard this great podcast. Think you should listen to it before I see you because you're annoying and stop giving me unsolicited advice about stuff you don't know anything about. Love you. <laughs> um, so again, share it, review it, have an awesome rest of your day. And let's remember, we don't need to be perfect, just consistently better than average. 92% for life.